How do you disrespectfully vomit at someone? Have you ever vomited at someone? I'm pretty sure that's fairly disrespectful. If you can't tell by my more animated demeanor, even more so than usual, we have something in store for you. Welcome to the nightmare. Welcome to Random's Thoughts. It's time for Fright Night. Full disclosure at the start, I am, of course, a content affiliate, and we are officially getting prizes from the Smoking Gun Interactive team, which is awesome. This is the, our third Fright Night event, but the first one where we're actually going to have prizes and players are competing for some awesome swag. Let's talk a little bit about what is Fright Night. So we're going to throw this up here, you know, a really <laughs> obviously quickly thrown together graphic, but Fright Night is a Swiss tournament that is going to cut to top eight because we have a significant amount of competitors. What does that mean? Basically, you don't get eliminated from this event unless you eliminate yourself. That is, you decide, I don't want to play anymore. I'm going to, I'm going to call it a day. And that's perfectly fine. Players will then get randomly paired in round one, which is currently ongoing. Then after that, they're going to get paired against someone with a similar record. So if you are 1-0 because you won round one, congratulations. But your life just got more difficult because you're going to play someone who's also 1-0. And so on down the line. So that in the final round, or after the final round, we are left with only a single undefeated or minimal number of undefeateds available given our player pool. After that, the top eight finishers will progress to the final rounds. That is a top eight cut, which means that those players are going to play in single elimination and basically battle it out until we have a singular declared winner who's going to take home a whole bunch of prizes. But we're not there yet. As part of the players competing, there's also a map ban system. We did not, we did not ban any phobies. But the players have a map pick and ban system that we'll talk about later on in the stream that allows players to tailor what maps they're playing on to their suited play style. It allows people to compensate a little bit for maybe what their collection is or find some gaps in their opponent's collection, potentially. We are enforcing a level one structure, meaning that now that we have quote unquote tournament mode from the development team, everyone has to play with phobies at level one. Aside from the level one phobies, we're also utilizing the, the arena not async feature. We're, you have to play arena games in this so that it forces everybody to think a little more quickly. But I'm very excited. I'm very excited. The thing that everybody's interested in that really wants to know what's what are people competing for? Well, you can see it on screen a little bit right about here, right about here. First place is going to take home three dreadful packs. Second place is going to take home two. And third and fourth are going to get a horrific pack. But the special secret prize that is being thrown in by the Phobies devs is my quickly mocked together Phobies hoodie. This is not what it's actually going to look like. I don't actually know what it's going to look like. I was just told that it's going to exist. They are going to get, they're giving me one, full disclosure. But they're also going to be giving one to the first and second place finishers for Fright Night number three. This is the first physical Phobies swag that I'm aware of. And it's awesome. Full disclosure. Exactly. Ah, ah, ah. So it's, it's exciting. I am very, very excited. I'm definitely looking forward to this. All right. So here we are. Fright Night number three. Round one here between our blue player opulence and our orange player player himself zoning into crypto let's see how the players perform when all the phobies are reduced to merely level one we get a lovebird opener from our blue player as compared to a fairly standard opener from player himself in the grave digger and cat play and we'll see how this works out for them so just double checking because as you can probably tell while i'm casting this game we are actually in the midst of round two. So I have to kind of juggle responsibilities here, try and make sure that I'm responding to all the players. We may have to pause mid game. If that comes up, it comes up, but we're getting a, a I was gonna say Venus, a poison Ivy, but we do actually now see Venus from the other side. The trap wars have in fact begun. 
We'll have to see whether the players decide to fight over that middle point and try and lay trap over trap over trap in order to continually destroy them, or are they going to position in a different way in order to try and take victory? So we get a jar follow-up and Gazuntite. The jar is in it makes sense because it's going to have the ability. Yes, we do in fact see the traps eliminate each other. That's why you heard the uh little whoopee cushion noise there in an elimination. But that does allow Ted and Jill to do what they do and be really tanky one drops. Really tanky one drops. And our blue player has now maxed out their phobies, expended all their keys. I almost said coins. It's not quite what we're talking about. So, in the meantime, we have a max out from the orange player. It's going to be a murder wing. Is this Ted actually going to eat it? <laughs> so, Ted does. Sorry, I got a funny ping in Discord. Got a funny ping in Discord, but we're getting some little bees action going down. Gazuntite finishing up the cat, not a big surprise. I'm not sold on the expenditure of the Ted. It was kind of expected that that you were gonna send the Ted in, but maybe preserving it would be better. I guess it's probably fine. It was probably fine. Ooh, the snowball. Despite everything being level one, in fact. You can still use all your stress level phobies. The snowball means the death of this poison ivy, but the poison ivy trap will probably be the death of this Venus. It could sneak its way up to this healing spot, but I imagine something is going to cut off its root. More traps, trap elimination, we'll say, going down, and a klepto for our blue player. Somebody's saying they can't speak in voice chat, but they're muted. <laughs> it's it's the fun part of doing this stuff. The tables are fine. <laughs> so we're getting the klepto going down. Sorry, chat. I'm I'm really sorry for the casting this stuff while I'm laughing at stuff going on in Discord, but I'm trying to get this squared away at the same time and sometimes you just have to laugh you have to have fun with every part of it we have a panic point advantage for our blue player over the orange player i might have to jump into their voice chat to try and get this squared away so Jinsting does go down. This is a pretty important takedown. The the phobies are spread here. They're not long for the world, at least this one. Hypothetically, you could go in and try and take down the snowball, but that's going to end in demise due to the jar. Plus, erratic following up at this level. I mean, erratic getting into position is going to be important no matter what, right? Oh, this is a bold invade. This is a bold invade. Like I said, you can go in here, but... Okay, so you get the meatball in the jar, but this is going to be an erratic on the stim in short order. And a bad sushi is the last phobie. I get the sense our blue player is having some fun, and they know. They kind of know where this is likely going. You get the stimmed up erratic hit. You get double hits from the snowball, the good boy putting the hurt on to Klepto. You can't quite take it down here, and it is a 3-0 to zero panic point advantage, but despite it being a small map, still over 4,400 health here. Follow up with a Cowbell and a Cassowary, and this just looks horrendous for our blue player. Even though they have this panic point advantage, it's not going to remain that way for, for much longer. We're going to end up with a whole lot of damage going down on stuff or just plowing through things. Our blue player is retreating with the Gesundheit, set up the turret position, and hopefully be able to take it from there. But the block from the Gravedigger means that Bad Sushi is just basically doing nothing forever. Now, the difference here is that Bad Sushi is going to trade for the Cowbell. Because obviously, Gesundheit removes the Cowbell, Bad Sushi probably goes in, and then Erratic eliminates Bad Sushi. Okay, that's reasonable.
This retreat is interesting. 600, like... I guess the concern here is that there's a leap and then a snowball to kill the Gesundheit. But you have to do something as the blue player at some point. You have to do something as the blue player at some point. You can't play it back because now, even though it will take forever, eventually orange player will get there. I might have to remind everybody <laughs> what, what they need to do. So we get a breakdown here and a repositioning. We're still in the spot where I don't think much is going to change here. We're going to end up going through and it's just ultimately going to come down to, hey, you need to do something. You need to do something, blue player. This is interesting because I have to imagine this won't die. Like, what is going on here? I don't know why this cassowary got sent in. The triple panic point doesn't really mean anything. I mean, I guess it does if your opponent's not going to do anything. There we go. We finally get an invade, but this means that this is going to die. Well, maybe it's not going to die, actually. This is only 812... No, this should die. This should die. Because you can swing the Gravedigger over the Snowball in, and then it's just a matter of whether the Bad Sushi can connect. You're going after the Bad Sushi. That's interesting. It does allow for a retake of the Central Panic Point if this goes down, which it looks like it will. But I feel like killing the Klepto and then maybe fighting through the Poison would have been better. You can heal the Snowball if they poison it. But there's a concern that the Snowball just dies between the Splash here, the Bad Sushi hit, and the Gesundheit. So this, this makes sense. This makes sense. But now, we're once again in the position where Blue Player down 1400 to 3k needs to make something happen. And we're getting a bunch of Splash going down. You don't have a whole lot of turns in order to reclaim these Panic Points. You have to invest something, and then ultimately it's going to be damage something blue versus something healthy that is orange. In fact, this is not a dead erratic. It survives with 60 health. Even at level 1, you still get those plays where sometimes stuff just makes it. Dead Gesundheit. We get triple panic point orange, and there's just not enough time. Not enough time for a blue player, but well played by both players. Well played. Down goes Erratic. But down goes our blue player. GG. All right, we're just taking a look at some random games from round one of Fright Night number three. Players are in the midst of round two right now, so if I need to pause a little bit and address some admin things, that may happen. But we're zoning in with Urk versus Catmad on Vile Vortis number 11. So our blue player opened with a fairly unique opener. It could be a collection thing, I'm not sure, but Boom, Boomer, and... Mur er, murder wing not murder wing it's actually maggie murder wing i was kind of expecting but as mentioned before there are a lot of ways on this map to make murder wing die then we get a cassowary cat and jar opener from our orange player Jinsting is the follow-up for our blue player we'll have to see how this goes since we're well underway in round two, there's a f there are some games closing up. We'll be taking a look at round two after this. We'll see if we can squeeze in some more round one reviews as we move on. But we're getting an elimination on Maggie here. Trading it for the cassowary seems okay. I don't like you can't kill this, and odds are you could body block anyway with the boomer. So you're not you're gonna put some damage on Jinsting possibly but it's not necessarily going to get you much here i feel like this is just a waste of the cassowary maybe not maybe our orange player is valuing the flyer very highly a 
So we get some follow-up here from our blue player. Jars to match, as well as some more one-drops. Panic Point Advantage is blue right now, and this is... As from the few games I played on this map, because it just came back, or just initially showed in rotation, not even came back, you can jump out to a fairly significant life lead. So this could add up, but now it's a three to two panic point advantage, way less damage going down on orange player's heart, but this boomer or this boom is in position to just swing to the top. So this is an aggressive bees play, but it does have the boomer bodyguard. It does have the boomer bodyguard. That being said, I'm not sold on this because you can soften it up with either of these, kill it with the sheep, and then tag Jinsting with the sheep if you want. The spy is nearby, and we also have a Bluelian follow-up, which seems like a cool answer to the sheep here, but... We also, speaking of full disclosure, Phobies have an erratic, or erratic, oh my god. Erratic was in the last game. A tractor is in this game. Whew, I don't even know where that came from, chat. But we do get the boomer elimination. Don't even need the challenge play or don't want the challenge play. Instead, we're getting a, a small retreat. I can kind of understand because the idea here is, of course, going to be get a tractor to yoink everything right into your loving arms and then eliminate them. So we do get a healing spa going down, maybe a little premature, but the cooldown on this is pretty exceptional. It's a pretty quick cooldown. You're you're spamming healing spas. And we get a Graylian as the follow-up. So we have both Bluelian and Graylian making an appearance here. Pretty cool match so far already, chat. We get a Kerbloom as a don't not to be confused with Boom or Kaboom. And with the Attractor, this could set up some potentially mean and nasty plays. Our blue player is going to have to be very careful, and I imagine that there's going to be a big hurt going down in the near future. You have a pull, and you have Kerbloom. It's just, it's destined, right? So we don't see blue player capping the center point. They instead elect to take the top. It is a safer one to a degree. I mean, not really. You can slide the Stairmaster up and the jar in order to eliminate this, but there's nothing really in position for orange to recap at the moment. And it also does put more distance between you and the attractor. That's the big thing. That's the big thing. Just double checking to see if we got any... Uh, any match results, but it doesn't appear that we got any yet. Just keeping an eye on it. So we do get the sheep and a rotation south, as well as another yoink. So we have double yoinks and a sheep, as well as Kerbloom. There's a lot of, I mean, no pun intended, but a lot of explosive potential in the orange player's board, or on the orange player's board. We'll have to see if they can actually do it. We do have a Switcher U that could lead to a dead Stairmaster. We, in fact, do get the Switcher U. The old Switcher U. This is a big deal because it's going to be difficult for our orange player to push a ton of damage with the Sheep slightly out of position and the Stairmaster dead. Now, they likely kill this Graylian, but is that worth it? It feels as though our, our blue player is saying, no, you're not going to get a lot of value out of this, so I'm going to advance. This is bold given the double yoinks. This is super bold given the double yoinks. There's a lot of bad things that could go down right now. Yeah, this is going to be a dead gray land, quite obviously. I don't know about expending the yoink there. That seems frivolous. You could have just walked up and and bit it because they're both the same. Uh, it's the same amount of damage on this, both the yoink and the attack. So I don't really see any purpose for that. But we get a Gravedigger follow-up. This could set up some potentially bonkers plays with breaking obstacles, but because the yoink is down on the spider, now this is a dead attractor. This attractor needed to leave. This tractor needed to leave. Now, it you can get a great sheep hit here on these two. Because you can kill the Contortio with, say, 
the stabby send in sheep, but there's a bigger problem. The bigger problem, at least for our blue player, is this Kerbloom. Obviously, they didn't see this coming, but kaboom. Now we get an even better sheep hit, triple, plus it eliminates the gin sting. Oh, baby. That is a highlight reel worthy play if I've ever seen one. I might have to pull that for later. Let's look at this turn again. This is a great turn. So shout out to Catmad. Making those tournament plays happen when it counts. So blow up the obstacle. Just slide that Kerbloom in. Remember, Kerbloom provides a displacement effect. So not only does it kill the Contortio, but it allows for you to get a triple hit now on Murder Wing as well as Cyclops and eliminate the Gin Sting. The advancing Stabby puts further hurt onto the Cyclops, and then you just follow up with a stray Jar hit. You're going to end up losing your Jar because of this positioning, but this turn is bonkers. This turn was bonkers. So we get the counter sheep hit, which is, I mean, arguably better. Not arguably, it kind of was better. Got four on here. We do, in fact, lose the jar. Because jar into jar violence. Get a little Kate Rock action. Mind that Kate Rock was from a while ago. <laughs> Looks like the spider is going to go down. Did the murder wing attack? I looked away for a moment. So the murder wing goes down to the poison. Shocker. It must have attacked. We get the, the yoink onto the blue lean, which allows Stabby to get... Oh, Stabby's not going for it. It's hitting this sheep, which makes sense. The yoink, then, is a little weird. And the spider goes down. The Stabby does survive. It's not going to survive the onslaught if... Blue player goes for it, but instead they're going for the mother load, which makes sense. Significantly larger threat. Both players are out of keys, so this mother load, Stabby, and Gravedigger are going to have to carry the day. And just like that, it is Gravedigger and Stabby that are going to have to carry the day. I don't want to call it too early, chat, but I have a feeling. I have a feeling that our blue player is going to take this. This is a pretty difficult board to try and come back from. Panic point advantage for the other person. They have four phobies to your two. Yes, you are on a stim. Yes, it is a stabby, but... Stabby can only do so much. Best phobie in the game or not, it can still only do so much. I love the alien attacks. I love the alien attacks. They're so cool. And now the final beatdown has commenced. Stabby, in fact, is trying to hold down the fort against the entire world. They don't have a panic point advantage, don't have an enormous life advantage. There's really nothing there. GG. Well played to both players. This was absolutely a cool game. We're going to try and check out some other round one matches before we jump into round two. But if you want to get in on the Fright Night action yourself, hit up the Random Thoughts Discord. There's details there. Or come by the live stream, RTChompGG, over on Twitch. As always, likes and subscribes do help. All right, so we're looking at more round one games. This time, our blue player is Grunkly. Our orange player is Bozo. So we're here on Exponential Decay, and we get a Drony plus Cassowary opener, kind of unique for this map. It does present some threats on this center point. Makes it a little bit more difficult for our orange player, but I'm not sure I like this opener. We'll have to see how it goes. And the answer is Murder Wing plus Cowbell, meaning a bank to seven for the orange player. I'm similarly unenthusiastic about the response here because this gives a lot of board control to our blue player on a variety of fronts. I would have liked to have seen more stuff get committed, namely, you know, a cassowary or something by our orange player, but this is, I mean, they will be able to reclaim some of this. They will be able to reclaim some of this. But the spud here means that, and the creep also mean that there's a, a fair amount of threats on the board to shoo away either a murder wing or threaten this gin sting, which has now made an appearance. But ultimately, the gin sting means that it's still seven keys available, gin sting and cat, that is, for our orange player. We do see the poison going down. 
possibly necessitating a muffin. Now, remember, everything's level one, so this is 800. This is only going to do, you know, six, 700 and change. Not quite dead, but will be dead with help. But it does matter because it's going to require additional things committing to eliminate the creep, and you can't necessarily recap that point. But instead, we're going to see a meatball plus the ginseng take it down, so that that way the cat can, in fact, take the point. Now, the spud here is assisting the drony in locking down the cowbell, which, aside from the panic point, favors our orange player. I know that sounds a little silly, but the fact of the matter is that five keys are trying to deal with a single key. They can get back in the fight, but it's going to take some time, even for the drony. Even for the drony. So we get a Jeeves. Haven't seen one of those in a while, to be honest. Well, I think we did a game review with one of those on stream. By the way, if you want to see some live Phobies action, RT Chomp GG over on Twitch. Or if you want to join with join in on the Fright Night action that we're looking at right here, hit up the Random Swords Discord. It'll be in the video description. But we're getting a recap of this top point. We have some advance, we'll say. There, there's really not much to describe this other than the sheep, which once again, I'm not a huge fan of the sheep, but it is what it is. So the Jeeves is working its way into position. We have seen some crazy freeze plays with Jeeves in general, so I could absolutely see Jeeves making a difference, but here we're going to see a stray murder wing get taken down by the combination of Spud and Cassowary. Now the Spud is likely going to pay for it with its life, it's really just a matter of whether anything is exposed in this counter-offensive. Got people in chat trying to figure out how top eight works. <laughs> it's not complicated. <laughs> uh, so we do get the takedown there. The sheep is just repositioning. We get a follow-up erratic. That's interesting, especially into Jeeves, because the low mobility of Erratic just reduces the number of places that it could be. And the Jeeves is going to start crapping out traps, as we're seeing here. Now, the cowbell means that this trap positioning is not great. The reason I say that is clearly the cowbell is going to go in and activate this trap, right? And hilariously enough, this panic point has still not been claimed. Oh no, this is just a painful positioning error here. Both undead phobies get tagged by the sheep. It's real bad. That's real bad. That's really unfortunate because that the cassowary is clearly going to die. The Jeeves, even if it doesn't die from the poison because, of course, undead life leech, it's still going to end up dealing a ton of damage. It's going to deal a ton of damage, which means that the Jeeves is going to have to retreat at some point. So the sheep will pay for it with its life. Not surprising. It's the bigger thing is that since it's eliminated, that allows Jeeves to hit this Alistor that got yoinked, and it's a dead Alistor. So ultimately, it's 10 keys down for our orange player, and nothing lost yet for blue, at least from that exchange. Will it remain that way? Clearly not. Cassowary bites the dust first, and for some reason, Jeeves stayed here. I mean, I guess it had to, but this clearly means dead Jeeves. That is, in fact, a dead Jeeves and a little bit of splash. Just because you can, from the erratic. But you still need to deal with this trap, so appropriately, as mentioned a few turns ago, we're getting the cowbell moving in. Get the cowbell moving in, it eats the freeze, but importantly, replaces the panic point. Five keys remaining for each player. There's definitely going to be a big clash remaining, or you'd like to believe that there's going to be a big clash remaining, because our blue player does have to commit in, and they've elected to go with Stairmaster, presumably just waiting for the yoink to come back online. But please, no, not like this. Not like this. Oh, no. Are you going to yoink this klepto? You're not going for the yoink. I guess our orange player did not have enough damage, but they could have hit the klepto multiple times. 
They're playing it safer, which I can respect. I don't know if I necessarily agree with it, especially since all three of these phobies are exposed to a yoink, which we're going to see right now. So we didn't get the orange yoink. We get a blue one instead that allows for a bunch of splash to go down onto Stabby as well. We probably see a dead erratic. 700 health remaining. This has got to be a dead erratic. Now, the counter yoink will also ye yield a kill, but the question is... What do we do here? So, in fact, the spider does die for its sins. Sorry, I was checking Discord for a second, so I was a little distracted. Spider does die for its sins, but this is arguably more even obviously four to five our orange players up on phobie still has their spider intact which is important to preserve however i think our blue player had to make that push it's just maybe not gonna ultimately work out damaged hevo slightly damaged stabby but everything else is very much healthy so it, you have to get multiple takedowns in short order for this to really work out And just like that, 4-4. Four to four. I imagine the Stairmaster is going to die. There has to be enough damage here. And because these phobies are so healthy, it's entirely possible for them to just tank through all of this. Even the Spider gets in on the regular fighting action. And the heal. The brutal Clinico heal. You can get a bunch of splash damage. You can get a bunch of lobs. But this is still 4 phobies that you got to fight through. Really 3, because who cares about Clinico. But they are very healthy. They are very healthy. Damage for you, and damage for you, and damage for you. So down goes Jinsting. Big shock. Big shock. Electing to take down the Stabby is interesting. Clearly you're getting the poison onto the Klepto to, to get it rolling. With only 900 health, the Stabby's not going to make it. This one's coming down to the wire. Does our blue player take this? 1,900 health on the Hevo. It's going to be difficult for it to for our blue player to not take this. You'd have to have an error where somehow you're able to yoink one of the phobies and then even, like, yoink specifically the Hevo. Off a cliff, I mean. But as it is, game looks like it goes to S. Grunkly. Well played and GG both players. These have been some long games, chat, even in just round one. So we're jumping into player in the blue trunks and opulence in the orange trunks on Xylo. This is, of course, for Fright Night number three, round one. If you want to get involved in Fright Night, hit up the Random Sods Discord link for the description and the live stream over on Twitch, RTChompGG, are in the description. Likes and subscribes help. Just throwing it out there. But as we get into the action, we see what I'll say are... Standard openers from orange, but our blue player is opening with Venus. This has become a trademark. Now, the Venus does allow for some interesting things to happen. I don't really know about this, though. This seems weird because I, I just don't see things standing on the lava. But player, as the Venus player, obviously has something in mind. Now, our orange player, the reason I was saying this is a standard opener is clearly the spud on the stim threatens a variety of different things, including the center. And then the Maggie and the cat chew up the remainder of the keys, well, vice versa, and allow you to, in fact, claim multiple panic points, including the center here. Now, the opener by player allowed for the 3-2 to two panic point advantage to happen on our orange player's side, as well as the tickles. Gotta love to see tickles with a little dance going on. Nine keys are banked, so we'll have to see what happens. All right, Irk, we should be getting underway soon. Should be getting underway soon. So the the Crushmore will allow for some cool plays on this map, and it is something that I personally favor. Yeah, get a little spin action there, Onda. Get a little spin from the Tickles. And you love how it flexes its little spines? I'm going to say they're spines. Ooh. So we get the Tickles shooting across as the Invade, probably hoping to, you know, gobble up a trap. In fact, the trap is on the lava. Joke's on you. The crush more I was saying was cool because it is going to allow for a break in the center or future breaks or future blocks to let things hit stuff that they shouldn't ordinarily be able to. But we get a Hevo 2.0, big threat from our blue player. So we'll have to see what they ultimately end up pushing in this spot. 
Now, this is really interesting because the player is insisting on trapping up the lava points. Ah, now this is cool. This is cool. You get the honey bear, which is going to allow for a disable on, well, whatever you want. It's probably going to be on this panic point. It could also be on the center panic point if, as you suspect, there's going to be an invade from our orange player to eliminate these phobies and then finish them off and replace them, really, as, as I should have said. Eliminate and finish them off is kind of redundant, but we do see a Luffy favorite, everybody's favorite, except for maybe mine, it's Tractor. It's only not my favorite because I don't have it, but a Tractor is a big ol' threat on this board. Big ol' threat. A lot of mean things can happen. So we do, in fact, get the double panic point power down from the Honey Bear Vomit, which means a 2-1 to one panic point advantage for our blue player, and we get a yoink appearing on the blue player side as well and some repositioning so one two three four five six phobies to one two three four five nobody's maxed out a little bit of a bank a little bit of a bank to six keys we'll have to see we're only about a third of the way in only about a third of the way in All right. I'm just double checking some stuff in Discord. We're getting some repositioning, but not too much going on. We finally do get traps showing up on the panic points. And this is actually a pretty heads up play by our orange player to take this one instead of this, where it's likely trapped up. That being said, this is a 500 damage trap to a 600 damage phobia. It might be worth clearing the trap if you want to stage some sort of invade. But oddly enough, or maybe not oddly, but funnily enough, the slow movement on the attractor means that this is actually a threat or is threatened by these traps that are on the lava because it might have to position there. So we do get the yoink to eliminate the cat. That's not all that surprising. And then we get the cap on the center panic point. I'm a little surprised by that because I kind of expected... Never mind, we're getting a murder wing to, re to back cap this. I was going to say I expected the contortio to go here, expecting the honey bear to, to again, vomit on these points. But it doesn't really matter. It's not that important. That cat was a hero, two panic points, and a yoink. Definitely worth one key. Now, the yoink is going to come back online before too much longer. I'm not too worried about that if I'm player. And it doesn't really gain opulence all that much. However, this gravedigger in the center does potentially... Well, it just broke this. I was going to say it potentially represents some sort of threat. But realistically, this high five is going to have to hoof it in, and there's not much you can do to interact with it. We get a bunch of damage going down onto this uh, Venus, but because of the positioning of the Gravedigger last turn in order to be able to break and then push through, it means that you only get a single shot from the Attractor, and realistically, it's only the pole, but, you know, the pole and, uh, and the attack are the same. So we get a kill on to the Gravedigger, and then we get the Vomit. So we're back to a 2-1 to one Panic Point advantage, and we're about halfway through the game. Player, welcome, welcome. And we get another trap going down. There's a, a, a minefield up here. And I have to imagine that at this point, our orange player has just lost track. There's no way to figure all this out, but... Somewhat of a mistake here. Get the yoink there onto the Crushmore, but was it? Because that means that the yoink is going to be equalized because this spider is probably going to get yoinked. So the question is, how are you dealing with this high five who is about to be standing on your heart? Yoink does in fact go down, equalizing the yoinks, like I said. That's a lot of yoinks in just a handful of sentences. Just a couple of sentences with yoinks getting repeated an awful lot. So if anybody out there is listening and doesn't understand, I don't blame you. Oh, baby. This is how you neutralize a high five. There's no way to escape from this point. Zero keys left for our blue player. Five for our orange player. We do get a yoink onto the brony, which allows some hits to go down. Is this dead? This might be dead. 
it does displace the high five if the high five goes in. But you have to. You must hit this. The pause here is making me think they're not going to hit it. Oh, no. Why? Not like this. Didn't even move the Finnegan because... Like the honey badger, player don't care. I don't... So I don't think it dies to the Hevo. Uh, because the Hevo was down here, I think, to start that turn. Yeah, the... Oh no, we could have gone into the spot. Yeah, the Hevo... Because I thought it was up one space, but yeah. So we'll skip ahead. With all this stuff powered down... Yes, you can still yoink. But like... This is... So we do get a cool play from our orange player here. I wonder if they're trying to set this up, get the boop onto the brony. If it dies, they lose high five for sure. The thing is, is that this is just such an enormous tempo loss. So we do get... <laughs> it's funny because the no damage is just like push. Slides over. We did get a smiley, which I don't know. Sure. It, it's actually only a 50-50 whether they step on the trap. Because they could have gone where Honey Bear is, and yes, they take lava damage, but... I mean, probably they just move up one. Alright, so we get the yoink. We get the retreat with the high five, but this is not looking great for Orange Player. I don't know how they get back in this. I don't know how they get back in this. But in fact, damage is back online for our blue player because Brony has worn off. So Finnegan pushing damage onto Smiley. Jar finishes it off. Panic points getting reclaimed even though it looks like there's still mud here. There's in fact not. Just a slight visual bug. It happens. It happens. So we do... We're going to get some eliminations here, but we're looking at 5,400 to 5,400. It's actually even. It's actually even on damage, but 4 to 1 panic point advantage, it won't remain even for very long. Just had to let everybody know, end of time, we're in end of round procedures. Oh, it's now a 4 to 0 panic point advantage. That is an insulting vomit. That is insulting vomit. Brony is so good, it's true. Brony is... We saw Alien Engineer for a while be the Brony person. Now, we've seen other people utilize it to equally devastating effect. We get the boop here. We get some repositioning, but this is kind of just... Rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic, as the saying goes. You're not going to reclaim these panic points quickly enough, certainly not without exposing something to getting, you know, absolutely pulverized. Hilariously enough, four traps went down. I think only one actually connected. I'm pretty sure it was four traps. It might have been more, but we see a dead attractor. We're getting a little damage going down on the high five. I think we could just skip through these turns. I hate to do that, but realistically, like, we're, we're not, nothing's even dying. We do see the heart, 1080 left. We get a little damage going down from Honey Bear here. How do you disrespectfully vomit at someone? Have you ever vomited at someone? I'm pretty sure that's fairly disrespectful. That's pretty disrespectful. But GG to both players. Well played. That's going to do it. As always, everybody. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And Black Lives Matter.